The brownie community is known for traumatizing a lot of kids with a lot of messed up things, but I ain't here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the music. These are mainly gonna be coming from the era that I sort of like was in. I was not a brony. Love it or hate it, a lot of talented artists came from the brony community. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> During its time, it sort of kickstart this huge creative movement to where people were making amazing art and they were making amazing music. Well, not all amazing, but you know, a good portion of it. A lot of people gonna question my legitimacy, but I'm gonna point out like two to three videos that I think you wouldn't know anything about unless you were there in the 2010s. Okay, so right here, it's not here anymore, but Wooden Toaster had a song that he kept changing the song title for, and it's called like, ah, uh, fucking something stupid, something cringy, a vast Fluttershy's ass or something. Yeah, see, original version by Wooden Toaster. See, eleven years ago, I told you I ain't capping. But yeah, they kept like fucking uh, changing the name of the song. And like no one else would know that because it's deleted right now. So I'm just I'm, I'm just saying I'm just saying. My last song is something I'm not gonna click on because I'm 100% gonna get copyright strike. But you're gonna go far, kid. This fucking PMV. Oh my god, it's like iconic to me. And like they didn't they stole the fucking song. It's just a nightcore song. They just sped it up. And like, I don't know. It just always fitted Rainbow Dash for me. Also, I want to add back in the past, YouTube had these like annotations or something like that they were basically like boxes on the video that you were clicking on it could cover the video it was kind of stupid but like there are boxes to links to like people's stuff and on nightmare night specifically when living tombstone released the remix wooden toaster got so pissed off that like they made this big box for living tombstone like showcasing his big ass ego and i fucking loved it i thought it was so fucking funny you can't find it now i mean i guess with a wayback machine you can find it but like right now you can't obviously anyway enough of all that jazz here's my top five brony songs dude this is so fucking wild to say number five okay that is Fuzox. Fuzox? Fu I don't know how to fuck to say this name i'm not gonna lie but anyway they're making special reflection remix that shit is absolutely fire. I know they're known for a more iconic sound with a smile VIP. It's a very good song and it has kind of a fucked up animation to it because if you know, you know. <laughs> People be asking why kids were traumatized by MOP. I, I wonder why, because of Smile HD fucking cupcakes fucking and all the fucking poor. This song just literally brings me back to like the 2010 era. It does everything so fucking well. Like I legitimately feel like I wanna cry when I listen to this song in its entirety. Like it's so powerful and emotional and just a well done song. And I believe it deserves to be one of the most iconic MOP songs ever. Well, uh, Brony song, excuse me. Number four was originally gonna be uh, Sunshine and Celery Stocks, but I think I need a tie. <laughs> I know ties are so cop out, but like, Realistically, it's hard. It's very hard. I think a sort of Fluttershy's remix on Twice Strike is absolutely amazing. This is a song I see myself coming back to year after year. It is that good. The amount of energy and volume this shit has is just oh, immaculate. But on the other hand, Sunshine and Celery Stocks, like, it's one of the most iconic brownie songs in my opinion. Like that song and uh, Flutter Wonder were uh, the two songs that literally made me like really want to be involved in like making music and both um, just listening to music, like brony music. So I can't ignore the impact of those songs at all, but Twice Strike Remix kind of fire though! Swing Tommy Swing is the amazing song that I swear someone made with like their Apple headphones mic. <laughs> the quality of this song is kind of bad, but like, they going in though! I think what I love most about this track is how passionate it feels. Like it really feels like this person really wanted to sing this shit. Like I love it. And they were singing absolutely amazing. Like. Rarely do I say a brony singer has talent, but like this person, they were kind of going off. I'm not gonna lie. It deserves to be an iconic memory. Next up at number two is Silverhound Diamonds. Now Silverhound has made a lot of good tracks throughout their life and a lot of songs that like, I guess you could say are iconic. 
but realistically, only one stands out. In my honest opinion, Diamonds is Silverhound's magnum opus. It's absolutely criminal how underrated this is. Like I get their other songs having like the amount of popularity they have, like Come Alive, um, Every Pony Banging, even though that song used to like break my eardrum. This one just kind of got swept under the radar and it deserves to have some light. And my number one spot for the top five iconic brony song, I don't know what the fuck, I forgot what I named this. <laughs> Fruits of Her Labor. Stormwolf and Wooden Toaster. Now, a lot of people are gonna disagree and they're objectively wrong. You know, they're gonna pick the obvious choice of Nightmare Night. And Nightmare Night is amazing if like there wasn't any rapping, like let's be real. I thought what really brought down Nightmare Night returning back to it was honestly Mike the Microphone. Like their rapping just didn't really do it for me. Like it's not really iconic or like fun to sing along to. It's, it's kind of like, a little bit out there but the chorus the chorus when wooden toaster gets on that shit and then after the chorus that iconic melody it's absolutely fantastic when you think about good iconic names in the brony community you think about fuzooks you think about wooden toaster you think about alex x you think about dj pwn 3 slash scrat on you think the lit wooden toaster like those are like titans of the brony community and there's another name that i will not mention because they're not good like no shade to the person at all but like they just weren't good in the 2010 era i'm pretty sure you know exactly who i'm talking about i'm talking about the one and only living tombstone the living tombstone was trying to force his way into the community and it was, it was something. I would be absolutely fine with the living tombstone trying to like force his way into the community if he made good music. And it's fine, you know, they made bad music. Like at the time he wasn't like a known artist or anything like that. I'm pretty sure like he started with the brony community, but God damn, did he never evolve his sound? Like legitimately listen to like one 2010s living tombstone song. And honestly, you're kind of sick. There's a difference between like having your own sound, your own individuality, and just copy pasting the same sort of stuff. And not to say like they haven't created any good songs, they have, but like in the Brony community, their best song was a remix. So the remix popped off and I get it. It's a poppy remix. It's like something you can blare in your car. It's like day-to-day -day life. If you were to pick a song, to like uh, show your friends as I don't know a brony or whatever like that you probably show them this song it's a very good song and it's uh, transcended the brony community but like the original highly outclasses the remix like this song right here is legitimately so distinct and original like this is just the living tombstone literally putting their basic ass sounds onto this track and making it more trendy and it's not trendy is not really a big problem but what really irritates me was the lack of attention this song got for the longest time like when people think of like the song discord they think of the living tombstone and that kind of irritates the fuck out of me i think being original better than being like trendy or poppy is way better so this song is absolutely iconic and living tombstone can politely step aside <laughs> okay running quickly through this some songs i actually wanted to put in the list but uh didn't really have time or like it, they just didn't really fit my top five would have to be these songs right here scrat on vinylicious absolutely amazing track and i think this is like super iconic because it's one of the only dubstepy like electronic sounds that like sound good still like a lot of the electronic songs from like the 2010s they didn't really age too well but this one this one in my opinion it still sounds very good i'm not gonna lie breaking bonds was amazing in my opinion the whole balloon party era like no community is gonna match what the balloon party was and the follow-ups the follow-ups just didn't really do what the balloon party did you know like the balloon party was so massive it was so iconic that i still listen to some songs to this day from it breaking bonds has no reason being this good and i think if it was uh remastered the way it is right now it would be such an amazing song it would pop off 
I can't make a list without this song. This song a little bit got ruined for me and it sucks. It really does suck. But like the song itself is still amazing. Like Trixie's lines in this feel so impactful and it like gives her real character. This song, Honest to God, would have gotten number one as well because this song is like amazingly iconic. But realistically, I didn't really hear this song up until the animation. And I think the animation alongside the song far transcends this song into its like iconicness. This animation really brought the song and the sound to life. And honest to God, this song sitting at like 51 million views is, it's great, it's amazing. I don't know if this animation is the most popular brony animation, I, I kind of just, fell off from all of that, but I wanna say if it is, it honestly deserves it. This is the best light you could have as a community. Honestly, I'm just reading this, this is actually beautiful. Like, they're actually paying respects to the community and like, the amount of impact that they had. Like, I, I really enjoy this. <laughs> when you know, when you're no longer in the fandom, but still, yeah, 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 I agree. I'm not, I was never a part of the brony community, but like, I, I know things, I know things. And that is gonna be my list of my top five. Honestly, there's a lot of good brony songs out there. Like, there's some that I didn't even mention. Top five is honestly such a small amount for a lot of the good variety of songs out there. But it, it's condensed for me, you know? I don't like MLP, and honestly, I kind of never really did. I just thought, like, Pinkie Pie was kind of cute. Like, her, like, mentality of wanting to die, but, like, also having this cheery sort of undertone. Like, I always gotta cheer up my friends. It sort of, like, resonated with me, and so that's why, I like, I liked Pinkie at the time, but, like, otherwise, I didn't really like anything else. Rarity was also a good character. Not gonna lie, Rarity had some class, but the thing is, is, like, the more the seasons got on, they sort of wrote their characters like shit. They realized, yo, this is kind of weird that all this random audience, all these adult people are watching this show. So let's fucking like please them while also like selling a fuck ton of products. The show's at its best when it's not trying to like teach a lesson or like tell a story or anything like that. It's literally having like cute wholesome moments like um like with the cutie mark crusaders majority of their episodes are super cute and like some of the best in the series but anything else that stretches beyond cuteness and wholesomeness it's super bad dude anyway i don't know why i made this list i'm probably gonna get clowned on for the rest of my life but i don't give a fuck dude uh this is a part of my life and i'm just here sharing it so uh, whatever